What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Easy Peasy Podcast, episode 55, coming at you with the Dream Team. Joining me this week, Nick. Hey, guys. What's up? And Brandon. What up? What up? Yo, we did what? 30 episodes together? Now we're back. We've done, we're on the third episode of the season two, you know? <laughs> season two. We're following Stranger Things there with, <laughs> we're on the Stranger Things schedule now, guys. That's fine. That's just how I'm going to think about it in my head. <laughs> um, yeah, so let's dive right in. We've got a great episode for you this week. We're going to chat about KFC's weirdo of trying to go viral internet, $10,000 internet pod. Maybe talk about some shopping we did this week since it is Thanksgiving weekend. Black Friday just happened or is currently happening. Um, which will eventually drain into Cyber Monday. Right. Nick wants to chat about Colorado for some good reason. Uh, his wife, Shayna, her birthday's <laughs> coming up. They're heading out there. Brandon's got net neutrality on lock. He's been writing to his congresswoman, congressmen, the senators. The FCC. The FCC. Dang. Yeah. And I, actually, I took – well, we'll get into it, but I, I'm following you there, and, and I've got a good – like texting bot website. resource, yeah, resource that we can that we can share with the crew. I'm gonna just tweet it out on the easy peasy and so forth. So yeah, great podcast for you. We'll jump right into the KFC weirdo internet viral thing they're trying to do. Ten thousand dollar internet pod. <laughs> it looks like a giant like tent that's made out of stainless steel. It's like really, from what I can see from the pictures, really well constructed. Yeah. But KFC is just trying to get viral on, on there. Like they probably only have like ten or twenty available. But okay. the idea is, you know, right now in this day and age, you're all, everyone has their neck heads down into their phones, noses in their phones, scrolling up with their thumbs. Yep. And the idea is you can get into this pod and it will magically like stop your phone from working, stop any internet device you might have, your smartwatch, <laughs> who knows what else you might have, you yeah. know? Um, yeah, I just think it's kind of like a dumb thing. We hear these like dumb products coming out every yeah. year. Maybe they cost a lot like this. Maybe they cost like 15 bucks, like the Cards Against Humanity thing they've done like every year. One year they sold you a piece of like poop. poop. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this Bullshit. year. This year, Brandon, um, I know you purchased it. Can you uh, tell the listeners like their cool product this year? Yeah, for Cards Against Humanity this year, <clears throat> I received an email saying that the, uh, last year they were done with holiday holiday hijinks. Um, <laughs> they were done trying to sell crap to people. Um, but times have changed. We live in treacherous times. Uh, so they came up with the bright idea to purchase land on the border and retain a premier legal counsel to fight eminent domain against the Donald Trump administration. Uh, with that being said, uh, their $15 now sold out. I think they had several hundred thousand. Jeez. I don't know how many hundred thousand, if it was just one or several, but I know it was at least a hundred thousand now sold out. Uh, but you get six holiday gifts, surprises mailed to you. Um, and one of them is, uh, just peace of mind knowing that you're saving America. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love the trailer. In the trailer or like the, oh my God. they have like this 90 year old man. He looks 90. He's probably like 60, but yeah. he's, Go he's ahead. a millennial. <laughs> he's talking about like just he just has all these cliches. He's spouting these cliches like about yeah. how he's a millennial. But yeah, you, you can buy a, this product and you'll you'll be buying part of the this little area on the border, and they won't sell it to Donald Trump or the government or whatever, so they can build the wall. It's just like a genius, <laughs> funny as hell, viral idea. This we're trying to poke fun at this like I mean thing that I know all three of it, uh, us in this room disagree with right. building a wall. I mean yeah. just how idiotic is it? Waste um, of money. Waste of tons of money. Yeah. <laughs> So uh, yeah, what else? What else did you guys do? It was it was labeled as Cards Against Humanity Saves America. Saves America. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you're right. You're right. Yeah, yeah. That's so good cool. call out. I, I do have a question for you, Sean. We sure. talked about it earlier regarding this KFC pod. My question is, do you get KFC with this? Yeah, you yeah. spend ten thousand dollars on a tent and you don't get KFC. You don't get any KFC. What? Yeah, and no biscuits. They, no biscuits. Once they sell out, <laughs> once they sell out the ten or whatever they pods they have, there's they're not going to replenish them. The doorknob though is a drumstick. So should be golden plated. Golden. Sure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and you should get a share of KFC's stock when you. Yeah, no, KFC. that's a good call out too. Yeah, totally. So yeah, what else did you guys do this weekend as far as shopping? Black Friday, you know, it's it's Black Friday weekend. I know we all had to work Friday, but yep. Did you guys get out? Um, yeah, we went out for a little bit this weekend, had a couple of drinks, and then yesterday, Shayna and I picked up a new video game because we got a Black Friday deal on it. Uh, we just finished playing Evil Within 1, and uh, we just purchased Evil Within 2. 
got about half off, so that was pretty awesome. Pretty stoked about that. So yeah, yeah, you got for like 25, 30 bucks. 25 bucks, yeah. And it just came out. Yeah, it's the newest game I've purchased in a long time. I haven't really purchased or been gaming that much, so I'm pretty yeah. stoked about that. Yeah, so what was the first... You guys put a day in, like twenty, almost 24 hours yep. in the first one. Yeah. It's like a survival horror. It yep. goes back to the roots of Resident Evil. Yeah, um, yeah. actually, the person that made Resident Evil 4 helped develop this game. Okay, okay. Oh, yeah, that's yeah, cool. cool. So a lot of the same game controls. It's really... What, what company made it, though? Uh, if you don't know, that's, that's a good okay. question. I, I don't know off the top of my head either. Okay. I'd have to look. No, that's uh, fine. Tango Game Works okay. is part of it, I know, but... Works, yep. W-E-E-R-K-S. Yeah. Okay, yep. yeah, for sure. Uh, but yeah, it was a super fun game. It, if, you, if you're like me and you like that survival horror genre, and you, Resident Evil has been kind of falling off of that, and there's no Silent Hill anymore, rest in peace, wow. which is one of my favorite survival horror like franchises. So this really makes you feel like that kind of gameplay, so it's nice. It's a good couch co-op game, right? Oh, yeah. Like yeah. You can play, and Shana can enjoy watching, or vice versa. Yep. She can play, and you can enjoy watching, just because it yep. like, has the jump scares, right. like, scary parts to it. Yeah, yep. totally. And that's kind of how we've been playing. We've just been going back and forth. Like, she'll play for a half hour or something, and then I'll jump in and play for a half hour. So it's kind of nice. Yeah. So it's been taking us a little bit longer to get through a game, but it's fun to do it together. Like, Yeah. Yeah. Do you ever get mad at her? Does she get mad at you for dying and like, <laughs> yeah, using like, resources? Yeah, because I'm like, don't use all those grenades right now. It's like, two, it's like two enemies. And like, we could use those for bosses. You better save those. And she throws all of them. Like, no, what are you doing? <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, I didn't get out at all. I mean, besides going out for a couple of drinks on Friday, I didn't really go out. I went on Amazon. I did, like I said in the, in our Facebook group, I do 95% of my shopping online now for yeah. like friends and family, white elephant gifts. We got Brandon's yeah. uh, patented holiday party coming up, <laughs> ugly Christmas Kindle Miss Market party, <laughs> where we're just going to do a bunch of drinking, eating, just enjoying our friend's company. But anyway, we do White Elephant there. I got my White Elephant on lock um, for that party. But besides that, nothing. What about you, Brandon? You go out? I didn't I didn't do anything. You didn't brave, like, the fighting? Like, <laughs> no. I saw, of course, I like to look at those videos, like, on Friday morning or Friday afternoon, like, oh, yeah. just the recapping of the last, like, 12 hours. Yep. People were selling, opening up at 4 p.m. on Thanksgiving, you know? Isn't mm-hmm. that ludicrous? Uh, yeah. Yonkers opened at 11 a.m. on Thanksgiving. What? Yeah, dude. That's nice. I thought at 4 p.m., I was, like, looking at all the stores I would have gone to. Mm-hmm. So, like, GameStop, Best Buy, all of them, like, the earliest I saw was 4 p.m. You're saying wow. 11 a.m. That's that nice. is just... Yeah. And I'm sure people were lining up. Right. Yeah, 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 for sure. I didn't need anything or want anything, but my brother went out and bought some video games. Yeah. Uh, Nick and I were talking before the show. Um, I, I'm not a gamer. I don't claim to be a gamer. <laughs> but uh, one game that I just learned about that my brother told me about, he's a massive gamer. His game used to be Mass Effect, but they don't make it anymore. It's gone downhill. So he right. he's now on the Call of Duty tip. But he just bought South Park. The fractured butthole game. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, what is this? So for just a, a tie into what we could be doing for the, the Easy Peasy YouTube channel in 2018 is I want to finally start streaming and capturing again. My setup at the house that Lydia and I bought doesn't really work that well. We only own one TV. I can't some, like can't capture through a PC monitor and get sound and video. It's just it's one of these things that just becomes such a headache. But What I will say is I'm going to get a new TV in 2018 so I can move the one in the living room into the office and I'm going to capture the first one, the first South Park, the Uh, South Park, the Stick stick of Truth. Truth. Yeah, yeah. So I have that. Nick was telling me about that game and how cool that was and I I was unaware of all of that in the very beginning. Uh, So, and then when my brother told me about the fractured butthole. I actually, I, I actually- <laughs> hey, have I, you heard about the fractured butthole? I'm like, what is this? And then I uh, I actually um, looked it up on online and watched some gameplay. I'm like, oh my God, this is a role playing game? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I had no idea. And there's and, 25 or $30 on Black Friday. So I'm like, pardon me, I want to buy myself this gift. Yeah, yeah, that's what he did. And yeah. I'm like, dude, you're gonna have to tell me about it. Cause it lo- I was watched maybe seven to 10 minutes of gameplay and it looked really fun. Yeah, it looks exactly, the thing about this listeners, if you haven't seen the, the trailers for the Stick of Truth or the Fractured Butthole, <laughs> it looks exactly like the cartoon. It does. Like, the I engine know, on right? the Xbox One, the PS4 can now per, like spit out exactly like the cartoon. The way they right. walk, the wobbling, the hopping or whatever. Yeah, the talking and the, Everything, the the motions and everything. It's yeah. really it's really cool. Yeah. And it's not like South Park has fantastic graphics anyway. You're not like new age games where it's like looking real life. So right. you could it makes it just look perfect. It looks like you're playing the TV show. It's awesome. Yeah. yeah, totally. So let's dive in, Nick, into what you've got wrapped up in uh for 
birthday plans with your wife. Yeah. I mean, while yeah. we're celebrating a Christmas party, what are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> so um, a couple so, weeks. Yeah. Sad that we have to miss the Christmas party, but Shana and I found super cheap round, round trip tickets to Colorado. We got like round trip tickets for like 70 bucks. So we were like, okay, this that is perfect. That is so insane. And you said you're um, flying on Frontier? Uh, Delta. Delta. So Whoa. I might get, cheap. I might get choked up, but you know, it'll be worth it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, Let's not United. Is it United? Uh, yeah, I think so. Uh, but hey, they're, they sound the same. They all people. suck. Yeah. Um, so anyway, Colorado's been Shane and I's like favorite place to visit for a long time. She was telling me her best friend, Katie, at the time moved out to Colorado when she was like a, a senior in high school. And then that just like started her love for it. She went and visited her the next year. And then just since then, she's just loved it. Um, so we went for the first year in 2014 just to visit our friend Caleb, Caleb Rizzuti, friend of the show that lived there at the time. Um, we just love taking advantage of everything that it has to offer. Red Rocks is amazing. Obviously, they have legal marijuana, which is very cool. Um, All the breweries. I know Shana likes to uh, yeah. uh, try new beers and yep. unique beers. Museums. Like, we just hit up something new every time. And so, I know that we've all now been to Colorado. Sean just recently went. Uh, um, seen, seen Red Rocks, yeah. Yep. So... That's why I kind of wanted to bring it up, just kind of see what your favorite. I know Brandon's probably been there eight times as much as both of us combined. So I just wanted to kind of see, like, your favorite Well, I grew up going to, college, going to Denver. My mom's oh, really? from Denver. Yeah, okay. yeah. So I grew up okay, going yeah, there. Okay, yeah, yeah. okay. Oh, I mean, I used to go there and, like, get – during the summer, so it was close to my birthday, and I, my dad okay. would take me to, like, video game shops, like, mom and pop nice. shops out there. We'd buy, like – so I got my N64 out there one summer. I got oh, Dreamcast snap. for my okay. birthday. Yeah, um, That's awesome. I didn't even realize that. Yeah, yeah. So that's – I have a close tie. I have family out there on my mom's okay. entire side. I haven't nice. seen them in many years. But um, we we all went as a group collectively for Decadence a couple yes. of years. Yep. And like two or three years through uh, New Year's Eve for Decadence. Yep. And I will say I love the big groups that we usually do for yeah. for Denver. But yep. this last May going and seeing Red Rocks and Odessa right. at Red Rocks um, when they first did their live performance with the, the jam band, the 10-person oh, yeah. uh, drum, drum band. Yeah. Or I just see all the videos of that and it looks insane. God, I'm, I'm kicking myself for missing that tour. But at the same time, I, at least I saw the R.O. Brown tour, the yes. Nova tour. So right. anyway, um, well, I kind of like took from this May trip for Lydia's birthday. It was mm -hmm. just me, Lydia, Becca, who lives out there, a friend, yep. of, the sh friend of the show, yep. and Peter, her boyfriend, um, also my friend. <laughs> um, is I like the small groups out there. Yeah. And I think small groups is really valuable. You yep. just being you two going out, right? Yeah. Yep. It's going to be really nice. Like you, you don't yep. have to like wait on everyone's hands and, True. and everyone's like desires. Yeah. Like, As we've found, yeah, sometimes that can get hectic and we're all nodding in agreement. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So our group is huge and it's amazing for a lot of reasons, but I just think of Puerto Rico when we said that, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, cause we all kind of wanted to just do these separate things. And we did times. a good job. Like just like, and okay. then we still did the fam stuff too. Like, yeah. You yeah. guys went to San Juan. Yeah. So, yep. um, Nick, what do you got on the docket then? What do you, what do you yeah. guys have to do? Uh, while we're there? Yeah. So take advantage of the local greenery. Yeah, yeah. For sure. Uh, and then, so we always go, it's kind of like a tradition, we always go to Voodoo Donut. Which, oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. So, On Colfax, right? Yes. So yeah. for anyone out there that doesn't know, it's kind of like, for us, Hertz Donuts, like on steroids, and more cool. Uh, they have... Tons of different types of donuts that you can get a giant black penis donut. Like, they just have funny stuff. But it's always really good. We always just get, like, a dozen donuts, and we'll just chow down up throughout the whole time that we're there. So you there. guys do an Airbnb then or hotel? Airbnb. Okay, yep. sweet. Um, and then rent a car. But we all got it all for really cheap, so we are really stoked about it. So Voodoo Donut. Yep, Voodoo Donut. Um, what else are we going to do? We might see a show while we're at that. Okay. Um, Ikali just happened just to be playing while we're there. Nice. So we might go see Ikali At the Fillmore? Uh, he is playing, I wrote it down somewhere. Um, it's okay. Fillmore's pretty big. Yeah. Yeah, I don't remember. It's just the only indoor venue that's, you know, medium size that just comes to mind. Yeah, he's yeah. playing at the Laramie Lounge. Oh, okay, okay, cool. That so, sounds even more legit, yeah, more no, intimate. Yeah, yeah. It, it probably will be, and that's, we were talking about that, I don't know, I think it was me and Luis were talking about, like, intimate shows, or no, Alex, actually, because you were talking about Arlo Grimes' show. 
uh, kind of festival shows versus you know their intimate one-off shows like the shows actually the seeing feels, the tour yeah feels mm-hmm. a little bit different and their sets are usually different yeah mm-hmm. so exciting well, being inside is so much different like yeah. it is i mean the sound is way way better in a lot of ways mm-hmm. but the vibes can be different yeah, just 100 percent right. different um and then we always hit up that outdoor shopping mall pavilion thing that's there okay um i don't know i can't remember what it's called what's a store that is like big deal um, that you have to go to when you go to that. They have um, Heritage, is it? Okay. Okay. That we don't have. I think it's Heritage. It, the Heritage is owned by Abercrombie and Finch. So yeah. you're gonna do clothes like? Yeah, shopping. we usually just do clothes shopping. Okay. We'll go to like some of those little souvenir shops with like the rocks and like all that kind of stuff. <laughs> just, do you think you'll do any outdoor activities? Um, Maybe depending on the weather. Right. Yeah. Because we've done that before where we like kind of hiked up in the mountains a little bit. Because mm-hmm. um, you so can go to Red fun. Rocks, right? You can go to Red Rocks. Yeah. yeah you can go to any time. That'd be fun. Um, and just kind of, it's fun to see because Red Rocks has like the walls of just every show that they've ever had there. So mm-hmm. it's cool to see all the, the like, museum. Past, yes. All the past artists that have played. Some of that is closed, I will say. Is it really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's kind of what we're going to do. Just everything, anything we can do. We, we might see if there's any like Groupons for fun things while we're out there. Are you, and you're staying for three days then? Um, uh, like two yeah. days in or whatever. Yeah, because we're flying in uh, probably mid-afternoon on Thursday the 7th and then we'll leave Sunday night. Okay, so, that's legit. going back to work Monday? Yeah. That's going to suck, but... Can I make a recommendation? Yes, please. Um, I would. Re- everyone has told me, and I can never get in. So maybe you'll have better luck. Okay. We're two weeks out. Yeah. The new Belgian brewery tour. Okay. Mm. I get recommended that every time, oh, okay. and I always try to go. Yeah. Um, and from what I hear, they treat their employees amazing. Really. You are required to take a full month off. Wow. And you can take an additional two required weeks. Required to take a full yep. month off. That's and awesome. You, and you can take an additional two weeks if you so be it. That's cool. they have games and things. Um, it's just a really good camaraderie and how they treat their employees. And I just uh, have always been encouraged to do the brewery tour. Right. That's awesome. Um, that's like another thing that I was going to mention too. Uh, a friend of the show again, Caleb, was just out there earlier, a couple of weeks ago, a month ago now. For I think he saw Elenium. Yeah. Um, awesome. yeah. and he went and did like the Coors tour. I want to do that so one too. <laughs> that would be awesome. That's something we've always wanted to do, but we never ended up doing while we're out there. So that could be something. We might I did do. that as a kid with my family. My parents <laughs> like, yeah, they took us. It was like during the day. Uh, did you get some root beer? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I don't know exactly how it worked out, but yeah, I know awesome. that that was a thing. That's cool. Um, my recommendation for you on Colfax again. I love that street. I oh, think yeah. it's the yeah. longest street in the that's not a highway in the United States. By the way, really? it's kind of cool. Nice. Um, one up the bar. Arcade. A oh, thing that I've been really okay. into traveling and going to Chicago. We go to so right. many Midwestern areas. We're going to SF for New Year's Eve, Brandon. Mm-hmm. Um, you got. I just love going to barcades. Oh yeah. Like I like yeah. seeing the new barcades. So obvi- eventually, I want to go to Kansas City and see the um, up down there and so okay, forth. Yeah. But Emporium in Chicago is my favorite. One up in Denver is my absolute favorite. Uh, Barcade, I've been to there. They nice. have pepperoni shots. Oh, That's yeah. That's where we got the idea for these pepperoni <laughs> oh, shots. Oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, the and wedding. Yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, so for the listeners, uh, <laughs> in the last year or so, during May, when we were there at the Odessa, we went to one up on Colfax. They had these amazing pepperoni shots. <laughs> so they just had vo- – all you had to do was soak vodka in pepperoni um, peppers and right. juice and let it sit for a good couple of days. It's it's like three or four day like uh, ferment type it. thing. <laughs> yeah, it kind of like you know, it doesn't really ferment too much as long as you don't let it sit there in too long. But you, the shots are just awesome. It's like you don't even <laughs> taste the vodka. So Lydia made some. So for, weird. Yeah, I don't know how it works out. It's a it's a science thing. But <laughs> the, Lydia made them for the wedding at Electric Forest for Nick and Shana's wedding. Um, and it was just an absolute hit. Everyone loved it. So, one up, the pepperoni shots. Right. They have awesome games. They have amazing um, amazing selection games. Better right. than one up, uh, up down here. That was Very my nice. question. Yeah, way cool. better. It's actually the best selection of games I've ever seen in a barcade. Wow. They've got, like, uh, Paperboy, but they oh, also yeah. have the biggest <laughs> Pac-Man, you know, the wall of Pac-Man. Yeah. Wow. Um, they have Rampage, which we're going to oh, get into. Yeah. yeah. They have Super Mario Brothers. They have Donkey Kong, Donkey Kong Jr. They have... Three ski balls in the back, just like up down, which I, awesome. I love. I love oh, yeah. how when people like seclude ski ball right. and put it in the back so people can just chill there for a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, That's awesome. Yeah, and I, I like the I like how it's set up too. It's, it does it's really spacious. You know how up down kind of gives you that like your mom and dad's basement type right. feel, yeah, which yeah. is cool to a certain extent. It gets crowded. Uh-huh. Yeah. It feels like you don't have anywhere to go or breathe. Yeah, this is 
way more spacious. You have okay. they have booths on one side, okay. and then they have games on the other. It divides the whole place up. Nice. Um, yeah, that's definitely awesome. recommend going to One Up. It's on Colfax. That's awesome. Favorite place to go. We'll I do think that. that's a good segue to talk about Rampage. Let's get right into yeah, it. Thank you, Brandon. Cool. That's a Sean way for you. <laughs> that's uh, <laughs> a Brandon way. Uh, Bra- uh, Nick, your other topic that you had us uh, do some research on, check yes. out Rampage. Right. Spit some spit about that. <laughs> spit um, some gay. Oh snap! So I was just like randomly scrolling through Facebook the other day, and I happened to come upon this trailer for, and it said Rampage. And I was like, okay, this can't be what I'm thinking. You know, there's other movies called Rampage, and it had Dwayne the Rock Johnson in it, which I love. The Rock. He's one of my favorite actors. He's just so like well rounded and funny, and just he's such a guy. Anyway. Um, and you loved wrestling growing up, right? Oh, so yeah. Like, yeah, huge wrestling fan. Yeah. Um, and then, so, oh, speaking of which, sorry, random, but did you see he got his t- tattoo covered up, his, like, signature bull tattoo? No. He got that covered up, yeah. Nuh-uh. I followed this tattoo artist, Nikki Hurtado, which is a really famous tattoo artist on Instagram, and he, yeah, he covered up his uh, I know bull Nick. tattoo. Nick is a guy, right? Yeah, Nick, you were talking yeah, yeah, about. Yeah, I definitely have followed him probably through your recommendation probably, multiple years yeah. ago. He's super famous. He's like, he <laughs> like does all he the does big celebrities. All celebrities yeah. shit. But right. he does like amazing portraits, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's phenomenal. Awesome. Um, so he got the bull covered got up. The bull covered up. You have to look it up. Okay, okay. Um, anyway. Thanks so, for letting me know. Yeah. And so I was watching this trailer. Has The Rock in it. I was like, okay, well, The Rock's been in some all right movies recently, but I'll give this a look. And then I start, and then I see this like huge dragon. I was like, okay. Oh. So, I was like, well, okay. Well, this, okay, that can't be it. I swear, it's not it. It's not it. And then I keep keeps going some more, and then I see this huge-ass wolf. I'm like, oh, my God, it is. They're doing a Rampage movie based off the arcade game, which is awesome. I yeah, saw because... that trailer when I went to see Thor. Oh, <laughs> really? Oh, whoa, no yeah. way. Okay, cool. So that didn't play when I went and saw Thor. What theater did you go to? Uh, the Al, uh, we, I went to a Cinemark Altoona okay. theater. Okay, okay. Cool. Dang. So, yeah, I went and saw Thor, loved it. Didn't see that trailer. Just watched the trailer this morning. Yeah. Prep for uh, the oh, podcast. I take that back. It was Justice League. I'm sorry. Okay, okay. Oh, okay, cool. Okay. Right nice. on. Um, just saw the trailer this morning. A couple of things like, I, I wanted to chat with you about. Yes. You guys on the pod. So, Rampage came out in 1986. It right. was an arcade game made by Midway. Yep. Which, um, Midway is now defunct. Midway brought us... Cruising USA so many good games. brought us Miss Pac Man, brought us so many awesome arcade games, Mortal Kombat, yeah, um, yeah. NFL Blitz. Yeah. So Midway yeah. was it, now defunct. They died in Basically 2010. Our childhood games. Right? Yeah, <laughs> and Warner Brothers ended up picking up a lot of those properties. So Warner Brothers bought Mortal Kombat. They bought, cool. I think, they bought uh, Rampage. Right. So that's why yeah. Warner Brothers, a movie company, now they can bust out this movie. Picked it up. Yeah. Um. So. The trailer kind of gives you some light on like some backstory. Not that the story is really going to matter too much for this, but The Rock apparently, um, no, this isn't really spoilers. You can see it in the first minute of the trailer, but The Rock has a pet monkey that he adopts at two years old (laughs) named George. Yep. Apparently George is like this really big sweetheart, silverback eight, like gorilla. Yep. Um, and somehow, like, something falls from the sky, like, it looks like a meteorite, right, into yeah. the zoo that George yeah. is, like, held in or yep. something. Yep. So the rock must be a zookeeper. Uh-huh. Um, and George goes up and touches it, and all of a sudden, he's now infected with this, like, weirdo, out- extraterrestrial, like, meteorite juice yep. or something. Yep. But the story in the game, not that it actually matters, because sure. it's, it's just a, it's a beat em up type, break down buildings game, but oh, yeah. is George is, like fed these experimental vitamins right yeah yeah, yeah so yeah. that's really weird that they did that uh the wolf so he just starts growing growing yeah but the wolf ralph yep. and then the lizard lizzie they yeah. feature them all in the trailer and yep. oh man when they hit when the lizzie comes on i'm just like oh i know right oh. yeah and We're, then you know it's gonna be a funny movie because the rock has that funny line like that silly line where he's like man i was just thinking the only thing they needed was a giant alligator like, the only, thing, this, <laughs> only right. thing that was missing was a giant alligator right um the cgi looks unreal oh though. i know yeah it does look really cool yeah. it just for basically like watching it for what it is just giant monsters breaking buildings like that's gonna it'll be a fun movie to watch yeah um thing about lizzie so i love this game too like you yeah, you said yeah. uh in your in your podcast notes you absolutely love this movie or this game growing up um 
I love this game too, man. I like played all of them. I pl- I remember playing countless hours. Oh yeah. I was actually pretty bad at it. But I was pretty bad. I was okay with like just be- getting through the first couple cities. Right. And then hopefully see- like seeing something. Uh, Denver, I believe, is one of the cities. So like uh-huh. tie back yeah. to Denver. Growing up, and going there for family. Yeah. I was like yeah, I like that because <laughs> they didn't have like a, an Iowa game, oh, uh, city. I don't think. But You're right. Anyway, Any Midwest town. Yeah, yeah, a Midwestern place. Um, I had a leopard gecko when I was a kid, and oh, I named yeah. it Lizzie. Did yeah. you really? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's awesome. Absolutely That's loved awesome. it. That's so yeah, hilarious. I'm looking. Ex- I'm excited for that. Oh, yeah. Do you have any ties to awesome. the game, Brandon? No. Okay. No. Honestly, but uh, one one funny thing is uh, when the preview came on. Yeah. Um, before I knew what it was. Uh, and the monkey came on. It was George. I thought it was a live action Curious George. Oh, oh. <laughs> I thought The Rock was the man in the yellow hat. Man, <laughs> the Rock is. I'm okay with The Rock he doing anything. I know, right? He well, he's anything wrong. He has two That's upcoming true. movies because he's doing Jumanji too. Yes, that looks rad. So uh, on cool. podcasts, I, podcasts I listened to that chatted about this briefly. This trailer when they came out. First of all, a lot for of Rampage. People, for Rampage, yeah, yeah. A lot of people are kind of upset about it. I mean, just really? because. I mean it. The Rock, I mean, some people might think it's just a cash in. I don't sure. care. The Rampage was never yeah. a serious story. No, or, yeah, you know, yeah. it's gonna be fun. But they were saying that this looks like it's almost like the uh, Jumanji game. Like it kind of oh, like yeah. the trailers like follows the same suit in a way. Like it, The Rock, it, it, it kind of does. If you watch yeah. them back to back, there are some similarities. Yeah, besides like giant monsters and right, one yeah. and just monsters or yeah, like yeah. giant animals chasing each other right. and the other and Jack Black <laughs> yeah oh yeah this one has Robert Downey Jr. in it yeah I uh, saw him the, in the trailer the Rampage one yeah Rampage okay. yeah yeah cool that's awesome so yeah R.I.P. to Midway something right. I don't want to see see die Brandon we gotta <laughs> hear you talk about what's going on Net neutrality in Congress. It's so scary it's not dealing it has nothing to do with Congress at the moment okay it's all uh the FCC, which rolls up to the Trump administration. Okay, so yeah, can you clarify some stuff for us? Yeah, yeah. Well, you could honestly Google uh, net neutrality and find a variety of so information. So what is net neutrality then? Yeah, basic uh, rundown. It, it basically is instead of treating all websites and internet traffic equally, um, internet service providers such as Comcast, AT&T, locally here in Iowa, it'd be Mediacom and CenturyLinks, uh, they they would be only re- be required uh, to have a baseline level of service right. rather than treating everybody equally. Um, and this change came out of a court battle. And this is going to be in the courts. The new rules that are going to be in place are mm-hmm. going to go back into the courts. Right. But this change came about because of a court case that said uh, the Internet cannot be ru- um ruled as a utility such as a phone service right. yep. which i think is bogus because yes. everything everything your job applications right. your uh oftentimes workers compensation like if you got unemployment yeah. it's all run through the internet that's such a good point like people like right off the bat probably these 60 70 year old congressmen or whatever i don't know people high up at the fcc mm-hmm. or whatever mm-hmm. they might think like oh the internet is facebook i mean no it's so much more so you have right. to go through the internet to get health care right now yeah, yeah. It, it, there's so much more so thank you for even bringing that up uh and uh rg Pai, who is the commissioner of the fcc says this will open up competition um and and to me um, I'm all for competition, but when a legislator or someone in the administration that uh, can't articulate competition adequately, to me, that means big companies making more money. Right. I don't know how it helps a competition. I think it hurts. I do, it, too. It will. Yeah. I do, too. It will. And um, it's just making these companies bigger. Uh, one example is... Comcast, this is an agreement already that they have. They started um, dialing back uh, Netflix's uh, bandwidth on the Comcast network because they noticed that Netflix takes about 50% of the streaming service over the internet. Which is insane. It is insane. Um, But the uh, ISPs, such as Comcast, complained, and they actually created a an agreement with Netflix where Netflix pays them, which yeah. is what they're trying to do with these rules. Yeah, they right. just want to get bigger. And the only thing that I can, good thing, so if there's a devil's advocate in this, this is what I see. Uh, if they get bigger, that means they should have a broader reach to give services to rural areas. Mm-hmm. If they do that, 
then there is a little tiny silver lining, but this is, is, is really not good. And this is why, in my opinion, and from what I've read, they can charge and bundle services. So right. let's say you game a lot. Right. You're, that's a bandwidth that you're taking up on the ISP service. Mm-hmm. Um, I watch Netflix and HBO Go and Hulu. I use right. the streaming services. Right. I would be, you know, they can bundle these packages and make you pay for them kind of like a cable subscription. Right. And if I upload to YouTube yeah. with the easy peasy. So I'd have to spend $3 extra a month just so mm-hmm. I can upload or watch or be a part of right. YouTube. Exactly. Yep. And it's, it's really going back to the model, which mm-hmm. we're trying to get out of from cable subscriptions. Right. You don't need all those services. You pay for what you need, right. you know, type yep. of thing. And um, I... I as we talked maybe with the show or before the show, I've written to all my legislators. I've mm-hmm. written to the FCC, and I've actually gotten back responses. Nice. And some of the responses I've got, well, they're not pleasant. Sure. Um, they say that the bandwidth on the Internet is finite, and as because it's finite, finite it should be open to competition, which I think is ridiculous. So this so, competition thing, I, right. is it, where is this, yeah, where is it stemming from? Like, why are they saying it's okay? Because I think it hurts. Mm-hmm. The way it hurts. RG, okay. RG Pi actually used an example of an ISP in Iowa, which I think is bogus because um, their I, uh, internet in Iowa is a monopoly. It's mm-hmm. it's regulated by right. a board, the I believe the utilities board, and they right. agreed that Mediacom and CenturyLink are like the main providers. I believe you can also get a Dish Network service through AT and T, but okay. I yeah. don't know. Yeah. Um. Yeah, the whole competition thing is weird for me because so this so back to 2015, this mm-hmm. happened already, right? And we won. Uh, well, uh, Barack Obama put in rule the Barack Obama administration, I should say, put rules in place to safeguard net neutrality. Right. Yep. Um, while that was going on, there was a battle in the courts to regulate the internet as a utility, mm-hmm. and they lost that battle. Okay, and that's why these rules are now coming into place. One other thing I want to mention is I was through looking up research. I guess Comcast is the biggest dick of them all <laughs> because they have a they have had past where they've blocked sites such as BitTorrent sites. Yeah, um, they slowed speeds such mm-hmm. as in the Netflix example I gave. Yep, and they require money for better speeds, which is exactly what we're discussing and why it's important yeah. that net neutrality remain in place. Mm-hmm. And that was a big like a pain point for a lot of people with this whole net neutrality thing because those service providers could potentially block certain things. Exactly. Like, so, like, if it doesn't fit their agenda or if it's against them, they could just block that. AT&T is currently going through a merger, which means to the Donald Trump administration for AT&T Time Warner. Right. And uh, Comcast is uh, part of NBC Universal. Mm-hmm. Those are competing companies. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, what's to say that... And Hulu... Uh, Disney has a stake in Hulu. Right. Who's to say that Comcast won't throttle Hulu right. because it's their competition? Yep. Mm-hmm. They c- and they could do that. They, they can. Yeah. If these rules, well, they're going to go through. Mm-hmm. But it's it's so scary. And it, and I, I remember this happening a couple years ago. The FCC website went down due mm-hmm. to complaints. People called in. They received more calls to save net neutrality than ever before. Mm-hmm. And wow. they do not give right anything they don't care right this has the like, huge outreach like like you were saying like it could even affect the podcast you know like it, it's that crazy like how far spread this goes like small businesses like anyone that ha- yeah would be any sort of like competition yeah yeah so for competitions let's just look at portugal right i think yep, that's you, a good example they, they there's a really good article out um i don't know if it's the guardian or somewhere they i think it was business insider okay business insider looked at portugal this happened in portugal they don't have any sort of net neutrality at all all data is up to the, the way that the, the people receive data or use data at all is all up to the isp so <laughs> there yeah so portugal has this thing called like one of their ISPs, so just think about it here and locally in Des Moines, Iowa, or nationally Comcast, Mediacom Comcast has something called SmartNet. So mm-hmm. you can pay five euros, I believe it's five dollars or five euros for just messaging. So you get all oh, like, oh, select yeah. the top messaging apps that people mostly use. Mm-hmm. So somebody out there that wants to make a messaging app right. that wants to like do some sort of startup, they aren't going to be yep. included in the messaging. They're going to be included in some other package. So right. people that just want to use mess, that's competition. You're right. not going to have a startup. You're for- stifling competition. Exactly. In that yeah. Yeah. 
you can't have a new messaging app. But let's just think about like always have only having MySpace, never having Facebook. <laughs> right. You know, so yeah. go back. And so they do the same thing with social networking. It's the Snapchats, Instagrams, right. um, Tumblr, Twitter, Facebook, and a couple other ones that are, are um, prominent in Portugal. Mm-hmm. There's no like startup. Let's right. say like a better Facebook or the next new thing. Or exactly. You can't it, it, part of that package. So it sounds like it stifles innovation too. Innovation in all forms. Like uh, you have to get a completely different package for all the other apps. Right. That no one else is going to want to pay five extra dollars for all the other social media apps or right. all the other whatever category they want to spit at you. Mm-hmm. Gaming, right. like Xbox yeah. Live is going to cost, instead of five dollars a month right now, if you spend 60 for the year, it's going to be five plus the whatever the ISP three, one. Right. The and then they can have caps on that. So then they can say you only get one gigabyte unless you want to spend seven dollars a month instead of just three or five. You only get one gig per month or one terabyte, which I mean, one terabyte for all your data. I mean, for somebody that's a heavy user, Mm -hmm. that's not very much. You know, one thing that I wanted to bring up in this that I think is going to directly affect me besides video streaming services is I like going to a lot of concerts and shows and like electric forest and stuff. Yeah. Those tickets are on the premium. And if you are not on the website at the right time, um, you may lose your chance to purchase that ticket. Mm -hmm. And if these rules are in place and they stifle uh, because you aren't paying extra right. or slow your speeds, mm-hmm. you're not going to be able to purchase those tickets right. because you're you don't you aren't rich enough. But right. it yeah. really isn't fair. So what can you do at home, listeners? What can you do? A resource that I was actually given by Alex, a friend of the show, is called Resist bot.io and all you have to do is go to this website hit yes i want to participate or whatever it's just a big fat button and then put your phone number in they'll text you and all you have to do is follow the text prompt so the text uh there's like four or five different texts takes five minutes i did it on my 15 minute break and still had time to go pee heat up my food and then (laughs) get more coffee and go back to my desk so at work i did this in the hallway on my phone just texted it asks you, where do you live? And I think you put your zip and your phone number in, and then you can say um, Des Moines, Iowa, or put your zip in. It says, okay, these are the people that you can get a hold of. So we have Joni Ernst. We have Chuck Grassley here for our congresswoman and congressman. And we uh, we have our governor. Um, no, it'd be uh, David Young and R.G. Pai, the FCC chairman. Okay, so who is our governor, though? Uh, Kim Reynolds. Kim Reynolds, yeah. I always get her name mixed up with Joni Ernst for some reason. But anyway, you have all these people that are locally that you can – that's how we're going to make any change is starting locally. One thing that I find crazy is I've seen from musicians, large companies, small companies, individuals – so many people coming together right. to resist this. Uh, Wiki, like websites like Wikipedia and Netflix, and then musicians such as Grizz and uh, Lady Gaga. I mean, yeah. all these people are against it, and and they don't care. Well, the four new net, net no, neutrality yeah, but against, against the new rules. Yeah, yeah. So they you they pick your your pool of people that you want to write to. Then they ask you questions to prompt like a response, and you can literally Google. Net neutrality template. Yeah. And it will yeah. give you just like... That's what I did. Yeah. <laughs> It'll give you like a basis that you can just copy paste into the text and the text will say you your your response starts with this, ends with this. You say, yep, that's right. And then it sends them an email. Yep. yep. Boom. I mean, I did it in 15 minutes yep. or five minutes. Yep. I sent uh, emails to all the legislators because I know they have, they have no stake in this, um, but, it, you know, influence is there right. um but then i actually called the fcc because i wanted to blow up their their that's awesome their thing or nice whatever. i need to put so i'm going to put resistbot.io in there and i'm also going to be putting um po- possibly posting about this or tweeting about this on the easy peasy twitter mm-hmm. and facebook um, it, it's really important resources. yeah Definitely. resources are super important so fcc number we're going to get that going for you guys and then i'll also post the link to resist.bot or to resistbot.io so you got to get out there. You got to defend the internet. Make your voice heard. Make your voice heard so we can pr- protect our artists, so we can pre- protect um, startups, so we can pre- protect innovation, protect yeah. ourselves. Right. Brandon, I want to hear about this. Uh, speaking of artists, yeah. Bruno Mars at the Apollo. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, okay. One thing that I wanted to talk with you guys is something that I've been seeing is uh, network TV is struggling to come up with content. We're seeing a lot of cookie cutter shows such as the CSIs and law and orders of the world. So they're going to new, uh, new ways of doing new things. avenues. Yeah. 
uh, such as live theater musical performances. Like okay. uh, Fox it has a Christmas Story musical coming up live. Whoa. I know they've done Grease. Okay. Um, uh, NBC did Peter Pan and The Sound of Music. Right. So they're coming up with new ways to do things. And on my musician bucket list, I know I hope you guys have one. Sure. I want to see Bruno Mars. All right. And I just uh, saw the other day that Bruno Mars is going to do a live show at the Apollo uh-huh. on CBS on Wednesday. Really? This Wednesday. This coming Wednesday. Yep, yeah, which is, I believe, like the 30th. 30, maybe the 29th. Um, and this is in a model because NBC did something similar when I was doing research looking up this. Adele did okay. a live a live thing with NBC about a year or so ago. Right. So I wonder if this is a new trend where we're seeing more and more live uh, musicians on, on TV, which I think is That'd cool. That'd be awesome. That is pretty cool. Yeah. So their reasoning for having these this live at the Apollo is because they're trying to f- do some new content. Then? I, yeah. I think okay. so because, it like I sense. said, NBC is doing music. NBC and Fox have done musicals. They did the Rocky Horror Picture Show. They've okay. done Grease, The Sound of Music. Uh, Peter Pan and the Christmas story is coming up. That makes sense. Um, and it makes sense just because, I mean, yeah, they have so much competition with streaming. Now, yeah. a lot of people don't really watch TV. I don't pay for TV. I don't watch it. I haven't I, watched Hex. No. I didn't watch TV in, a, in years. So I just so. signed up for Sling yesterday. Oh, yeah. Just because, so Sling is like Cartoon Network, AMC, the History Channel, Travel Channel. It's all this. Nice. It's like all the channels I would want. Disney right. Channel. Sure. For 20 bucks a month. Um, and you can watch like live TV. That's awesome. I mean, whatever they have on those actual channels, 20 bucks a month. I only did though. So we, so for Lydia's mother's Thanksgiving that we went to yesterday, we could watch a football game on oh. ESPN two, sure. that's ESPN one, two, three. I'm going to cancel cool. it. Not going to use it. <laughs> Just like you said, yeah. I don't watch TV. We watch right. Netflix. We watch HBO go. We watch Amazon. Like you said, Brandon Hulu. Yeah. My question to you guys is I thought Bruno Mars is amazing. Cause I want to see his show. Sure. What, what, uh, live, uh, Primetime concert, would you want to see uh, <laughs> on like a network? On a network, kind of yeah. like, so whatever, I want to see live at the Apollo. Well, it doesn't have to be live at the Apollo, okay. but well, mo- what musician would you wa- would you sit down and watch? I mean, like Radiohead right off the bat. Yeah, for sure. Go. Okay. I'd watch AFI. They're amazing <laughs> live. I yeah. know they're they're not really that big right now, um, primetime, mm-hmm. but uh, Nick, what about you? That's tough because I'm thinking of what. These... What's mainstream, you know? You would like, have to do mainstream and have then to have to be artist. somewhat family friendly. Somewhat probably like they probably label it, label it PG or yeah. PG 14. So that could be like a Fallout Boy for me. Ooh, oh, that'd yeah. be legit. Yeah. That'd be awesome. Ooh, we just had an awesome conversation this last weekend while we were singing our hearts out to all this older like, <laughs> yeah. emo. Right. So right before we went out on Friday, we were all like doing a sing along to like Fallout Boy, brand yeah. new, the used. What comes to mind is My Chemical Romance. Oh, That'd yeah. be a good band to like yeah. hop back into the mainstream. If they ever got back together, hey. there's no better time than on primetime TV or that would be amazing. Warped, Warped Tour. Tour. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you. I was just going to say that. Yeah. Uh, I listened to the episode last week where you guys were talking about the whole Warped Tour thing. And yeah, kids are petitioning to try to get them back together for this final leg, which would be awesome. Yeah. Oh, amazing. It would... They might make enough money to save it. If they did. <laughs> so I think it is 100% dead. Um, Kevin Lyman, yeah. he just, the way he, he's like, the passion's not there. He's actually like really, ne- even more stuff that's come out, he's really negative on the kids right now. Yeah. Like I, I know he already, we, we talked about it last episode, but he's really negative on the kids. He thinks that yeah. the kids uh, don't want to go out. The kids, I mean, I don't know. He sounds like a crotchety old man. Kids he's in his days. Yeah, he's in his 50s now, so. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I think War Tour's dead. I don't want it to be dead. But yeah. I'm okay with it going out going out with a bang. bang. Going We're out gonna with be a bang. Going, I'm going to be getting as many people as possible to go. We should. Sunday, uh, just like I said, too. Because yep, they announced the yep, dates. Yep. Just like I said, it's like the third or fourth Sunday, and it's in the early 20s. Uh, 20th days or whatever of July. So yeah. it's going to be, I think it's July 20th. That'd be awesome. Or 22nd. Yeah. yeah. I'm down. So I'm, I'm ready. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for so. sure. So um, kind of like just piggybacking that question, who would you want to see headline Warp? Because I wanted you, I mean, I really wanted to hear your out, uh, right. input yeah. on Warp Tour since you weren't able to be on last week. Yeah, that's so obviously I think MCR would be awesome. <sighs> I'm trying to think of all those bands in the heyday that right. like, that really that would bring all of like our crew back together, bring all the like 
the people that used to be into the scene heavy in the early 2000s or whatever, like those artists. Man, the used would be so fun. I the used would be awesome. Yeah. I've had the used um, stuck in my head since Friday's single. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, just any of those bands. Because, like, okay, did you guys ever, ever pick up their, like, compilation CDs? Yes! So, I still have them in my car to this day. Yes. Oh, definitely. Right outside. So, those, I never went. 2014 with you guys was the first year I ever went. Whoa! To War so, Tour? Yes. Oh, my goodness. Uh, oh, and we so, only went because I forced everyone to go. <laughs> <laughs> because every time I die, I was on. So I'm happy to see, to see that they will be on next yeah. week. But um, the compilations. So I, the compilations were me living through vicariously because I wanted to go to the show so bad, mm-hmm. but I just never had the opportunity to go. So I would always, I always picked up those compilations every year and those, I would find great music from those. But, and I just, like Brandon said in the last show, just still stuff I listen to to this day. But yeah, stuff like that. Uh, I don't know if Fall Out Boy's ever played, but I, I see feel them. like they have. Oh yeah, Newfound, Newfound Glory. I would definitely see them. They go there every year. They're I believe. Every year, yeah. yeah, they Wouldn't were it last be cool year. If they had somebody that like helped bring up um, War of Tour. Somebody right. like. So, so, I know Sublime with Rome. I mean, that's not the same, but Eminem. Yeah, yeah. What yeah. if somebody like That'd be sick. that? That's humongous like Eminem's top 10 biggest stars like they could I would love that to that bring awesome. them up and yeah. then I would skip Eminem set <laughs> really <laughs> yeah and I would go see MCR or something like that yeah because they depends probably on who would be playing at the same time well they yeah. would they would split the yep. split the crew <laughs> yeah just like you were saying last week I love that it's like totally warped tour where they have two main stages right next to each other uh-huh. one gets done and while they're doing the change out on that one the other one's playing it's just back and forth yeah Ah uh, man, Paramore. That'd be a, Ooh, that'd be a good that. one too. I'd see uh, that one. One that we saw in fourteen that was like a bucket list band for me was Saves the Day. That was Ooh, really awesome. Yeah, yeah. yeah we saw cool. them at Warped, right? Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. why I was like a bucket list item for yep. me because I loved them growing up. Bands are striking hot right now. Knock Loose, Code Orange, yeah. those heavier bands. Mm-hmm. Those bands are. I mean, they're gonna. Their year is next year. So if yeah. they aren't on Warped, they better be on a massive national touring headline, maybe even oh, worldwide yeah. headlining tour. Oh yeah. Yeah. Warped Tour. We're still we're gonna be talking we'll be about Warped a lot in the coming weeks, coming months, because ticket packages are going up gonna be going on they sale. Are, I think they're on sale now. I think it's uh, like it, VIP yep, ticket and packages. And then general admission goes on in March. In March, correct. Yep. That's March. what I was just gonna say. We'll do it, we'll all go and we should do a companion pod for it. Yeah, yeah I like it. Yeah, for sure. I wanna try getting like you said, Nick, everybody in on that. Everybody going, everyone doing the sing-alongs, wrap arms, oh, man. arms around each other, crying, maybe <laughs> crying. Yeah. I might go a little bit too, Dude, Chad. Yeah, if it's the last one, man. We should. What do you guys got to line it up? I know, Nick, you have, well, we have your, your, Shana's birthday party next yep. week. Yep. You guys are going to or going to Denver. Potential so, show. Potential show in, yeah. in Denver, yeah. Yep. Before Denver, though, I'm going to be going to Seven Flags to see... Uh, Circus Survive Thrice, oh. Balance and Composer Chon. It's on a Wednesday, which kind of oh, sucks. Man. Seven Flags kind of sucks. But those, I mean, three of four bands, Circus Survive, Balance, Composer, and Chon are like top oh, favorite man. bands. That, yeah. And Thrice is just heavy hitter. That is a band that, that would do very well next year, I think, as a last year at Warped. Because they were, they were huge on Warped early oh, yeah. 2000s with um, when they were like humongous. Yeah. yeah, huge in that scene. Like, like Sao 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 Oh man. Man, that'd be cool. Bringing back memories. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Alkaline Trio, uh, you just said Sao Sin. That would be really oh, neat yeah. if like, I know it, uh, and Anthony Green's voice would be shot, completely yeah. shot, but if they had Circus Survive and, and then right Sao Sin, oh. <laughs> he would be dead. Like, he, I mean, he yeah, gets too wild awesome. on stage. He starts screaming, blowing out his voice. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I'm gonna be seeing that show for sure. If you are out there, come get say hi to me. But I think that awesome. we're gonna wrap up the show. We had a Sounds very <laughs> awesome show. We got through a lot of stuff that I wasn't expecting to even touch on. So you can find me at Sean S. Johnson. You can find me on Instagram, Twitter, all that pla- all those places. You can find the Easy Peasy at the same all the places at the Easy Peasy Nick. You know, you, we got the Nick's Mix. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. So you just released Nick's Mix 4 last yep. week. Yep. We pimped it out at the end of the episode. Yeah. Thank what you. What? Uh, what do you got for Nick's Mix 5? Do you have anything brewing? Any ideas? Um, yep. There's some good stuff going. It's the holiday season. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> really, good good, uh, good job bringing that up real quick, Brandon. Like, did you guys hear that Cascade has a holiday yes! album? I'm like, going to, uh, yes. I'm going to check it out, but I'm like with bated breath because I'm like... I don't know. Dude, that, I've heard some. EDM like, I've heard li- Yes, I've okay. heard good EDM Christmas. Okay. Huh. I love I it. I can see that. That would be interesting. So Cascade's playing in uh, SF 
New Year's Eve. Brandon and I and 10 other friends now are going to be there. And um, not at Cascade. Cas- no, not at Cascade. Sorry, sorry. We're going to be at <laughs> SF. Like, You're like, I didn't get tickets. <laughs> no, so we're, we're going to see on the day before New Year's Eve, so the 30th of December, we're going to see Tycho. Yes. Oh, um, my God. Uh, yeah. That's awesome. Uh, and then on New Year's Eve, we're going to see T-Pain. <laughs> hey, hey, all drinks included, kind of yeah, like how we yeah. did in Puerto Rico. I yeah, like that. Really cool. yeah. I got a little bit too gone on, in Puerto Rico. I got lost for about an hour and a half. I don't know it's, how. It's, it's, it's theme of uh, Sean's vacation. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I lost my watch that Lydia got that had easy peasy and great done. Oh, I know. Yeah, I effed up. Um, but Cascade's playing in, in New Year, in, uh, in San Francisco for New Year's Eve. We're not going to be going to that show, but I am interested to check out his Christmas album. I am interested as well. The cover art looks legit. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. I'll have to check it out. Now that I see that you're excited about it, Brandon, I'll check yeah. it out. Uh, I love Christmas music. So Hanson's playing next weekend in Chicago on Sunday. They're playing all of Snowed In. Christmas oh, album, my favorite Christmas album growing up, listening to it. That's my awesome. first CD. Really? Yeah, yeah. That's awesome. 1997. That's um, awesome. Right, uh, so, Nick, they can find you at... Uh, Bazooka underscore Nick on Instagram. And Nick Gandy. Uh, okay, Nick Gandy, Nick yeah. Mix 5, coming out next week. Brandon, where can they find you? As always, uh, G- uh, go visit G0.8. That's awesome.